I'm joined by Jim Stern, the world-renowned AI expert, author, and speaker, who's recently published his 12th book, Artificial Intelligence for Marketing. Jim, thanks for joining me today. Thanks very much. It is a pleasure to be here. So Jim, telecom operators have huge amounts of data that they're sitting on, but to convert that into intelligent custom interactions is another ball game altogether. You have a five-step plan to get service providers up and running with AI. So where do they start? Step one is always education. Go out and find out more. Um, the hype is considerable. The subject matter itself is wildly complex. We're talking about deep mathematics, PhD level, and it is tough to get your mind around and just become more familiar with what's on offer. So number two is identify the business problem you want to solve. This is not going to be an AI solution you can drop on top of everything and it will solve all of your problems and become sentient tomorrow. It is a tool that you will use to solve specific problems. Now, just like any other data issue, you need to be very clear about what problem you're trying to solve. Um, if you look at a problem um, vaguely, the machine can't do anything with that. If you want it to solve a specific problem, answer a specific question, that's great. So let's go after uh, improving customer satisfaction after contacting the call center or something very specific. That will lead you to step three, which is identify what data might be predictive. So the problem that we have <laughs> with big data is that there is so much of it. The value in AI is that it can deal with a lot of data. But if you give it too much, if you give it too many variables, the results are um, lower confidence. If you give it too little data, high confidence, but it's going to be wrong. If, if I flip a coin three times and it comes up heads each time, the machine will say 100% confidence, the next one will come up heads. That's wrong. So too little, too much. This is where the, you know, the, the first step is what's the problem. The second step is let's get the right data set for the machine to chew on. Step four, experiment. Um, try it out. You know, don't, don't bet the farm. Find a specific problem, uh, do some experimentation, get comfortable with failure. It is trial and error a billion times a second. That's what it does. So be comfortable with the fact that when you go to set up a model and you're starting to train the machine, it's going to make horrible mistakes because that's how it learns. And then when it starts to ramp up, suddenly it takes off and it will amaze you. And then it will go into incremental improvements, which is great, but uh, right out of the box, don't expect miracles. Step five is change management. Um, let's get some successes under our belt. Let's show some specific uh, ways that the investment has paid off well. Uh, let's find other people in the company that have the same kind of problem who can say, gee, if you did that, I might be able to use this kind of tool to solve my problem. And then it grows. If you try to, it's classic change management, if you try to bring this in at the top and push it down, You've got everybody at the coal face trying to get their work done going, ah, I don't understand what this is for. And if everybody at the bottom is trying to do it from the bottom up, uh, well, they don't have the budget, first of all. Then you've got this gap of people in the middle who are the middle managers, who are trying to earn their quarterly bonus, build their empire. And if they're being pushed from both sides, uh, they're going to rebel. So, you can start at the top and try to get everybody on board and everybody into alignment, and that will take you 17 years. If you have little spot solutions that can show people, wow, this is a really valuable tool, this is useful, then people will start pulling it into their departments and managers will pull it into their groups rather than have it be pushed upon them.